welcome to tonight's meeting. Before I ask uh, the city clerk to read our quote for the, for the week, which will be very appropriate after what I'm about to say, please, please try to be here about 20 to 30 minutes before the meeting and get all the documents in. There's no need to have Sue Russian through the documents to make sure that they're placed. It's imperative that those documents are signed before we conduct business. It's okay to socialize and all that, but the documents should be next to her at no later than 10 minutes before the meeting starts because it just creates a little panic. Uh, and I, I believe Sue would appreciate that too. That would be great. Thank you, Sue. Please. Team player, one who unites others toward a shared destiny through sharing information and ideas, empowering others, and developing trust. Thank you, Madam City Clerk. Call the 20th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Would you please call the roll? Warren. Here. Berg. Here. Serta. Here. Davis. Here. Graf. Here. Hannah. Here. Kittleson. Here. Clayonis. Here. Manny. Here. Meyer. Here. Montemayor. Here. Radke. Here. Ryan. Uh, excuse. Susha. Here. Vanderweel. Excuse. And Verhassel. Here. 14 present. Quorum is present. Alderman Serta, would you please lead us in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do we have any appointments for the Okay. Thank you, all, Vice President Serta. Okay. Approval of the minutes, President Burke. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the minutes be approved as entered on the record. Second. Motion and second to approve minutes. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Resignations uh, and appointments, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. One resignation from uh, Andy Geeson advising the mayor and the council that he's... Uh, for health reasons, resigning effective January 1st uh, from the Commission on Aging. And I'd ask for a motion to accept and file. Move to accept and file. Second. Motion and second to file. All, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Resignation is accepted. And two appointments, both dated today's date. Hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. David Beeble to be considered for appointment to the Naming Rights Committee to fill the unexpired term of Thomas, Thomas Holton, whose term expires 4 1607, signed by the mayor. And that will lie over. And John Vandemal to be considered for appointment to the Commission on Aging to fill the unexpired term of Andrew Geeson, whose term expires 4 1307, also signed by the mayor. And that will lie over. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Next item on the agenda is the uh, proclamation honoring Martha Hill, and I would ask uh, Ms. Hill to please come forward and perhaps her parents. No? Hi, Martha. As I always say, it, being a mayor, you get to do a lot of things, but it's when you do a proclamation like this, it has, adds a lot of more significance to, to my job and uh, a lot more pleasurable. It's a proclamation under Martha Hill. Whereas Martha Hill is a graduate of Sheboygan North High School and has been an active participant as an athlete in Special Olympics for more than a dozen years. And whereas Martha has been appointed to a two-year term as an international global messenger for the Special Olympics. And whereas Martha is one of only 12 individuals worldwide to receive this designation and whereas Martha will be going to Washington, D.C. for training in her role as international global messenger. As part of the training, Martha will be visiting the various embassies to learn about the cultures, cultures of the athletes. And whereas in October, Martha and her fellow messengers will serve as master of ceremonies for the Special Olympics World Games in China. Martha will be joined by NBA star for the Houston Rockets, Yayo Ming in, in Shanghai, now, therefore, I, Juan Perez, by, the virtue, by, the, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Sheboygan, do hereby extend my personal congratulations and those of the entire city of Sheboygan to Martha Hill and encourage all citizens of the city to join me 
in recognizing the accomplishments of Martha Hill and letting her, letting her know how proud we are of her. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, thank you for this recognition, Mr. Mayor. I am very honored, and I will re represent Special Olympics and many athletes from around the world, and I'm very honored. Thank you very much. Thank you again, everyone, for joining us and congratulating Martha. Next item on the agenda is a public forum. Madam City Clerk. Uh, yes, Scott Lewandowski. And Scott, can I have your home address, please? 2201 Fury Avenue, Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes. Thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. I'm here tonight as chairman of the Historic Preservation Committee and as assistant city historian. And I would like to speak about the proposed changes that are under consideration at tonight's meeting and the next common council meeting. I am here because there are many misconceptions about these ordinances. And at the next meeting, you will vote on these changes. All 16 of you will vote on these changes and possibly the mayor if there's a tie. But what you, but what you do now know about the background of these ordinances. Alderman Ryan is on the committee and attends the meetings. So he knows the background of why we are against some of these changes. Of the other 15 aldermen here who will vote on these changes, none I repeat, none of you have attended a Historic Preservation Committee meeting, and only one of you, Alderman Shusha, has even called me up and asked questions. Even Mayor Perez has attended more Historic Preservation Committee meetings than 15 of the aldermen here. Some background on Sheboygan and its historic preservation efforts in the past. Sheboygan has the worst record in the state in this area. In 2001, Sheboygan started a survey of potentially eligible sites. Sheboygan was one of the last cities in Wisconsin to start this survey and the last of Wisconsin's major cities. The survey was finished last year and is shown here and identified 1,600 potential historic sites. Sheboygan was one of the last cities in the state to finish this survey, as I said. And it's one of a handful of cities in the state and the last major Wisconsin city to have no city landmark sites of any kind. The city of Sheboygan is the only major city in Wisconsin to not even have its own historical society. Here in Sheboygan County, Oostburg, Cedar Grove, Random Lake, Plymouth, Sheboygan Falls, Howards Grove, and Elkhart Lake have their own historical societies. Even Lakeland College and Kohler have museums for their history, but the city of Sheboygan has nothing. Last week Thursday, on the front page of the Sheboygan Press, was a photo of a pile of rubble of a building that was torn down, and it's right here. And the building next to it is also scheduled to be torn down. Nothing was done to save these two buildings, even though both buildings were listed in the survey. The Historic Preservation Committee was not even notified that these buildings would be torn down. One of these two buildings was unique in that it was the oldest building on 8th Street between Michigan Avenue and Indiana Avenue. I repeat, it was the oldest building on 8th Street in the business district. Not only was it the oldest building, but it was the oldest and only building built before the Civil War still left on 8th Street. It was built in 1860 as a harness shop when the Sheboygan city was only seven years old, but it's now gone. 
On Thursday, I went to take pictures of what was left, and I met three young people in their early 20s asking why the city of Sheboygan does not do anything to save historic buildings like other cities. One of these young adults asked why couldn't these two buildings be remodeled into condos instead of torn down for new condos. She added that out-of-city developers come to Sheboygan and don't even care about our history and destroy our old buildings. The historic preservation ordinance we now have that you want to change was based on ordinances in other Wisconsin cities and from the State Historical Society of Wisconsin. One major misconception is that if a building is landmarked, you can't do anything to change it. That is not true. With permission from the Historic Preservation Committee and or the Common Council, changes can be made. You can find the same information on the Wisconsin State Historical Society website. Historic homes and businesses can also receive tax breaks for work done on historic homes. Again, this is on the Wisconsin State Historical Society website. The work even includes installing new wiring, plumbing, and roofs to preserve these buildings. I ask each one of you to visit the State of Wisconsin Historical Society website and look under landmark buildings and see what they have to say before you vote. I'll be glad to speak to anybody here tonight after the meeting or if you want to call me at home. But I ask, how can you vote on this ordinance when you don't know the reasons or what is in the ordinance? Excuse me, Scott, would you like an additional minute? Your five yes. minutes? Okay, go ahead. Even though you read the minutes, you don't get all the information on the discussions as to why something was approved at the committee. When you voted, one prime example of the ordinance that you don't know what's in the ordinance was when you voted to amend the ordinance last week and add that the Common Council has to approve all landmark sites even after City Attorney McLean said this was already in the ordinance. You voted to add something to the ordinance that was already in it because you did not do your homework and read the ordinance beforehand. Now you will be voting on more potential changes without knowing all the reasons why. I ask the people of Sheboygan to let your aldermen know how you feel so that we don't lose any more buildings like we did the two on A Street last week. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Scott. <clears throat> That's it. Thank you very much for addressing the public, uh, the, uh, the council at the public forum. I wanted to talk just briefly about, uh, as we step into a new year, talk about uh, what I perceive as a new challenge for the, the 07. Uh, to me, this is the year, the new year is the year of a new mindset. It is a year to take one simple step towards being positive and toward being the champion of Sheboygan. I really, really believe that the people of Sheboygan have had enough negativism, disrespect, fault finding, and just plain chronic complaining. As a council, we truly have a lot to be proud of, and the people of Sheboygan have taken notice. And they appreciate the great work that all of us are doing. There's five things that I'd like to touch on, although there's a lot more. But one of the things that you've accomplished in 06, and I'm, I'm looking back to, to, towards, uh, looking back at 06, and then we'll talk a little bit about 07. But you put together, all of us put together, a pretty aggressive street repair and reconstruction program. As I go out into the community, as I went out into the community and talked to people, one of the things that kept percolating up all the time was our streets are in pretty bad shape. When are you going to fix our streets? It was important to me, and I believe important to you, to put together some comprehensive plan by which we can address our deteriorating streets, and we have done that. For example, in 06, we resurfaced New Jersey Avenue from 15th Street to the bridge. We did High Avenue from 7th to 12th Street. Union Avenue from 11th to Business Drive, 13th Street from Illinois to Wisconsin, 8th Street from Ontario to Michigan, Commerce Street from Penn to Indiana, Concord Drive from 
from the extension to the, the gateway. Washington Avenue from South Business Drive to Taylor and South Business Drive from Washington to Carmen. Folks, that's a lot of streets when in the past streets were being put in the back burner because other things were, were starting to take priority. And one of the things we cannot ignore is that streets will never maintain its original look. They, they will begin to deteriorate. So we need to always keep in mind that if we neglect our streets, sooner or later we're going to be spending more and trying to repair them than we would in just trying to maintain them. In 07, we have on schedule on South 7th Street from Indiana to High Avenue and on North 7th, at North 7th, from Gilly to North. At North 3rd Street from Bluff Avenue to North Avenue. And Lincoln Avenue, which has been one that uh, many people have called about uh, several years and never got a response. Uh, Lincoln Avenue from 8th to North 13th and North 13th from Mertens Avenue to Gilly, and Niagara Avenue from North 4th to North 6th, Salmon Avenue, uh, the curbing we did from 15th to the 21st Street, Indiana Avenue, we'll be doing that from 14th to 17th <coughs> Street, and that'll finish off most of our corridor on Indiana Avenue all the way up to the bridge. And then the most important, one of the, one of the very important ones, I should say, is Fifth and New York uh, Stormwater Repair, where we have a 14-inch sewer uh, stormwater uh, line that's going to be replaced by, I believe, a 40-inch, which will be able to just take care of all that backlog of water that people were having a lot of problems with. So, so one thing that you have to be proud of is the aggressive street repair and maintenance and reconstruction program that you put together and helped me and supported me in putting together. The other thing that I think is very important for you to look back and, and talk to your constituents and, and um, talk to the public about is the, the Clean City Initiative. And as we look back, uh, and I believe you would have seen an article in the newspaper, there were about 834 nuisance complaints. 97 of those complaints were dealt with either by the property owner or the city of Sheboygan. That is a huge accomplishment. That's 834 areas that needed cleaning up that no longer need cleaning up this year. We took care of that. And of all that activity, which is amazing to me, only 41 citations were issued. 41 citations is not a lot. That means our, our community, our residents, are cooperating with us. Now, unfortunately, when you issue uh, ordinance violations, there's a, there's a cost for that, and there was about a little over $9,500 $9, that was collected by the city. We don't issue by citations simply because we want to collect money. I think for most people, it's going to be cheaper to clean it up than to try to pay citations as, as they move along. And I think you have a lot to be proud of as we move into 07 because that program is going to get better. Uh, Paul Ed Andrews and I and the inspections department are working on how, how do we improve that program even better so that Cheboygan is a much, much cleaner, enjoyable place to live in and so that people can take their properties a little bit more serious as others do. And I've always said and I will continue to say there's absolutely no reason why a person or a property owner that takes care of his or her property should have to look out their window and see garbage. There's just no excuse for that. And I think it's our responsibility to act on that. The third thing I think you, you should be proud of and that, that you've accomplished is we put together a pretty progressive city development plan. Uh, and, and as we move progressively in developing the green warehouse, the, the the Morningstar condominiums, the Rice condominiums, the Highland uh, restaurant, the, the, uh, the, the little town square there that between the Highland restaurant and the Kepsel building. As we, as, as we develop all these properties and continue to develop the peninsula, we're still maintaining that good old hometown flavor. People like that because progress a lot of times has its price and you sacrifice some of the things that are dear to you for progress. I don't think that we want to do that. So in all that city development, we're still able to maintain that good old small town, hometown flavor. The other thing I think that uh, we can be a, a proud of is the preservation and the maintenance of our parks. For the longest times, our parks were neglected. 
It was almost cliche to say parks are not used. Well, of course not. They weren't accommodating. They weren't welcoming parks. People call a park a block of land. Now parks have playground equipment for kids. A great example that said there was an issue is Sheridan Park. The gazebo is going up. The restrooms will be going up. Lighting has gone up. If anybody has taken a drive by there, you'll see that it, there, there's light now. Grills have been put out, picnic tables, trash bins, benches. We've got the fence in the back on 13th Street. That whole street has been paved and curbed. We're taking care of our parks because those parks mean a lot to us and they mean a lot to future <coughs> generations and their children. And that we have a duty to do that for our, for our residents. And the fifth one that I want to talk about is the, uh, an area that I think you will be proud of as we move forward and look into a comprehensive engineering plan. And some of these things I've, I've borrowed from, um, from our city engineer uh, uh, that, that he has in plan. And, but I wanted to share some of these things with you because these are some of the things that are, that are going to be, that will be done. And Bill Bulky is, has been a, a, just a great asset uh, right off the bat. But there, we'll be looking at providing you with the state of our streets report. It'll give you keen insight and updated information as to the condition of our streets and the needs that we have. There will be a report which will identify our, where our needs are for the next 10 years. That'll tell us, that'll be able, that'll allow us, enable us to plan for 10 years as opposed to doing things year after year and wondering how we're gonna go about it the next year. There will be lots of meetings with the Department of Transportation to solicit funding for major street repairs. We cannot, we cannot exist or operate in a vacuum. We have to reach out. We're looking to improve traffic flow along our main corridors. A lot of people take traffic corridors and just general traffic for granted. We drive up and down these streets and really not really pay attention to what's going on and the activity that's going on. Thankfully, we have engineers, city engineers that do. And as they, as they pay attention, they'll make our, our driving more friendly, more accessible. We'll be reviewing and analyzing current policies for sidewalk replacements. Our sidewalks for the longest time have taken a beating. And we'll be working on that pretty aggressively. We'll be analyzing to, and determining the needs and upgrades of our aging infrastructure. A lot of our infrastructure, again, has not been worked on for a lot of years. And one example, as I said, with Fifth in New York. And we'll be doing that and moving pretty aggressively on that. And finally, I think that one, another one that some people take for granted, although some don't in some particular neighborhoods, is analyze and determine our lighting needs in certain sections of the community. There's areas that definitely could use more light for a lot of reasons, vandalism, drugs, anything or just plain light so people can enjoy their properties at night. Those are five, five things that I think you can be very proud of in having done, looking back, and looking forward is that we will accomplish. Now all that is under take one simple step towards being positive and being a champion for Sheboygan. Now where in the world did I get that? Of course, there's always a story behind this. I was at the library last week, and I sat down to read a book just briefly. I actually flipped through it and enjoy the pictures. And a gentleman came and sat down next to me, and we started talking. And somehow our conversation ended up with New Year's resolutions. And I told him that I had several, but I never really worry about it, and just hopefully things go through like most people do. And I asked him, what is your New Year's resolution? And he said, Take one simple step toward being positive and be a champion for my family. And I'm thinking, what in the world does that mean? But before I could ask, he said, you know, for many years I have been negative, contradictory with my wife. I have not treated my children right. I have neglected them. I've ignored them. He said, I, quite frankly, it was a bitter life. I wasn't enjoying it, and neither were they. And I was very negative and bitter because of everything that was happening. He said, but this year, I'm going to take one simple step toward being positive and for championing my family. Now, I asked him if I could repeat this, and he said it was perfectly all right. But I'm not going to, I didn't ask him his name, so I don't need to do that. But if you think about it, take one step, one simple step 
toward being positive and to being a champion, in our case, of Sheboygan, is going to take us a long way because there's 16 of you, one of me, and a lot of department heads. Folks, if we spread the word of the good things that we're doing, the positive things, people cannot help but notice and appreciate. So when you're confronted with negativism, when negativism appears to prevail, when personal attacks appear more tempting than personal praise, take one simple step toward being positive and being a champion for Sheboygan. When people show you disrespect, promote disrespect toward you or other elected officials and show no grace, take one simple step toward being positive and being a champion for Sheboygan. When people are pointing fingers, finding fault in trivial matters, take one simple step toward being positive and being a champion for Sheboygan. And finally, when aimless chronic complaining positions itself as a norm, when compliments fall short and praise is nowhere to be found, just take one simple step toward being positive and being a champion for Sheboygan. And I just wanted to point out something that's, ha that's happened this last year that's incredibly important. Sometimes even I forget. In 06, you held yourself together. Fiscal responsibility, I think, was the accent of your tenure. You held the line with a 0% increase in taxes. What does that mean? That means, folks, that you saved the taxpayer $1.8 million, roughly. You eliminated the stormwater tax. That's $1.5 million that the taxpayers would have had to pay. And that's 1.5 per year for the next three years. You eliminated the wheel tax. That's $210,000. You adjusted the price of a police station from $13.5 million to nine. And we're still going to have an adequate and affordable and beautiful police station. People in the police department are going to be extremely proud of that beautiful building we're going to put up. You also saved Sheridan Park, and you preserved all other parks. You made it pretty difficult for anyone to threaten to take a park again. What price do we put on that? Priceless. So if you think of those things, the total savings that you gave the taxpayers in 06, that the taxpayers don't have to pay, well over $8 million. That's a huge accomplishment for a common council, and you've done it all. Every single day, we should hail our accomplishments. Every single day, we should take one step forward toward being positive and being a champion for Sheboygan. As we dedicate ourselves with humility, pride, and grace to improve the quality of life of our citizens, be mindful that the duty belongs not to one person, but to all. Every single day, we humbly hail our accomplishments. Every single day, we should take one step towards being positive and being a champion for Sheboygan. Sheboygan belongs to all of us. Thank you very much. President Burke. Yes, Consent thank you, Your Honor. I would move that we accept and file all the ROs, accept and adopt all the RCs, and put the general ordinances upon their passage. Second. Motion and second to approve. Under discussion, Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Before we vote on these, I would like to bring forward uh, document number 2017, just for a comment. Uh, this document has to do with the uh, uh, study at uh, the traffic study at South 12th and Wilson Avenue that's been going on for, for some time. And I've received a lot of calls on this study. Uh, the study proposed uh, changing that intersection to either currently during the study it's flashing red lights and stop signs. I'm happy to report that public protection and safety uh, voted at their last meeting that effective on February 6th that that intersection is going to revert back uh, to traffic signals. Uh, and that's basically what the, the people on the south side have been communicating, that with this uh, four-way four -way stop with the stop signs and the uh, flashing red lights, 
it just has not been working. It's been causing, that's the intersection right by uh, Wilson and, and uh, South High School, and at the busy times of, times of the day, it's just been a huge inconvenience for people that are driving their cars and also for the uh, students that have to cross the street there guessing when they can safely cross. So I'm happy to report to the people on the south side that use that intersection that again on February 6th, it will be going back to uh, traffic signals. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Alderman <clears throat> Susha. Um, thank you, Your Honor. I was wondering if I could just have an explanation on 2018 from Deputy Chief Shervin. Is there a motion to open the floor to Deputy Chief? Move to open second, second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Deputy Chief, Servant, would you please, sir? Thank you. This is, please do. question that the constituent had I couldn't answer and um, it states here that there are 14 police department patrol duty sedans less trade and two detective duty sedans without trade and the question is what happens to the old cars that we're not trading in we'd be using those cars because there were few miles left on them and we figured that it could uh, could save the taxpayers money by having the detectives use those cars and having other purposes rather than having uh, having new vehicles and I would I would agree with you as far as the amount of money that's uh, that's used in these cars or the amount of mileage that they uh, that they have. It's uh, they're on the road 24 hours a day. Normally we had uh, traded the squads in every two years. It's it's three years and we're, we end up having additional problems such as fuel pumps and and uh, different front end parts that could need to be replaced. So we definitely believe we needed to replace them. Okay, thank you, Deputy Chief. Okay. Alderman Hanna. It's just, I just had a question. Okay. For the Chief. Please, Deputy Chief. Yeah. Sorry about that. Thank you. Please continue. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, on average, when we turn a patrol car back in, how many miles does it have on it? It would have uh, 70 to 100,000. These would have, I believe, pretty close to 100. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Deputy Chief, again. All right. There's no further discussion. We will call the roll. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Kittleson, Clayunis, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Susha, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. and Boren. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions 2019 through 2024 to be referred. Report of officers to 2025 by the city attorney stating that a response has been received from the attorney general's office which concludes that a municipal library is authorized to enter into an employment contract with a library director, which includes provisions for a term of a certain number of years, termination for cause, and a lump sum payout if terminated without cause. President Berg, accepting uh, file. Yes, I would uh, ask that the report of officer be accepted and filed. Second. Motion to accept and file. Second. Under discussion. There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 2026 through 2027 lies over. 2028 through 2042A to be referred. And Vice President Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to um, take 2036 and make a motion to file. Second. Motion and second to file 2036 under discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, due to what Alderperson Bourne had just stated, that this is issue is going to be rectified with repealing the earlier resolution. Thank you. Any more discussion? Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I know Mr. Uh, Justice, um, who circulated this uh, petition, had um, brought me a copy of it. And I'm wondering, do they get, will they, all the petitioners on here get notified as to um, what happened as far as... Um, the um, 
what they signed, um, you know, to, to let them know that the stop signs will be replaced or... Um, I, I believe we can do that, okay. Alderman Groff, if that's to your pleasure. It would be beneficial to the people that signed the petition. Thank Very you. Very good. Uh, Susan Hart. <coughs> Susan, would you please make a notation of that? Thank you. We'll get that letter out tomorrow. <coughs> Alderman Barn. Thank you, Your Honor. I, uh, I should have mentioned this before. I spoke with uh, Mr. Justice today, uh, the one that passed the... Uh, petition around and he's uh, I explained what we were voting on in the consent agenda and he was fine with uh, filing this document he had no problem with that okay thank you very much okay resolutions introduced 3 2042 by all oh I'm sorry there was a motion to file no we didn't we take a vote no okay there are no other discussion all those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 2036 is filed. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Tw uh, resolutions introduced 3 2042 by Alderman Meyer, dissolving the Special Committee on Pet Friendly Parks. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second to put 2042 upon its passage. Under discussion. Under discussion. I would like to thank this special committee that was formed on to look at the dogs in the parks issue, and that would be Harold Bebel, Paul Meyer, Vicki Hall, Bill Steffen, and Steve Stauber. And they did an excellent job of researching this and talking to the community, and I just would like to thank them for their hard work, and it was, it was very well appreciated. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Alderman Clayunas. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, there was some question about uh, enforcement. Um, did the committee bring discuss any of that at all before they disbanded? Or? Um, Attorney McClain is going to be changing some of the... Uh, yeah, I'm, I will be bringing in under uh, all the person Meyer's name at the next council meeting to have in <coughs> ordinance form the changes that uh, are reflective of what was recommended and approved by the council. Thank you. Any other discussion? There being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 2043 by Alderman Meyer, <clears throat> excuse me, Alderman Meyer, authorizing and executing a one-year lease for the agricultural property in the town of Wilson, formerly owned by John Poth, Poth Jr. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion is second to put 2043 upon its passage under discussion. Alderman Susha. Um, thank you, Your Honor. I just have a question. This is 30 acres of land that the city owns in the town of Wilson, correct? Yes. Um, just wondering what our future plans are, if we're just going to continue to allow this gentleman to farm at $50 an acre. It's a well-kept secret what our future plans are. Um, the land does not is not abutting any other city property for now. It, it sits there, and it, we make whatever use we can of it by leasing it out at a very nominal charge. Um, but uh, I would uh, I would consult with Paulette Anders with respect to, to that particular so she can speak to you individually. Anyone else that has any interest in that? Would that be okay? Sure. Thank you. <clears throat> Anything else? We will call a vote on 2043. Please call the roll. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Clionis? Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Susha? Aye. Verhassel? Boren aye. and Burke, aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 2044 by Alderman Vanderweel, authorizing the mayor to sign the memorandum of understanding allowing for the 2006 Justice Assistance, Justice Assistance Grant Award of $10,840 to be transferred to the Sheboygan County Sheriff's Department to continue the upgrade of live scan fingerprint system. Vice President Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Susha? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. And Serta? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 2045 lies over to March 5th. 2046 through 2048 lies over. 
2049 and 2050 to be referred. Report of Committee 6, 2051, by law and licensing, recommending denying beverage operators license number 5096 based on the applicant's habit of breaking the law, his failure to reveal all convictions on his application, and his record of convictions related to license activity. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the uh, report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Under discussion, is Garrett Meehan here this evening? He's not here this evening, Your Honor. Thank you very much, Alderman Ratke. <clears throat> Any further discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Graf. Aye. Hannah Aye. Kittleson, Clayunis, Manny Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Susha Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. Boren, Aye. Berg, Aye. Serta, Aye. and Davis. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 2052 to be referred. Reported Committee 7, 2053 by Finance recommending the adoption of the naming rights policy. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second to accept and adopt under discussion. There, oh, Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I think this is a, a very important step uh, for the city to uh, seriously move forward uh, and to allow people to uh, name properties uh, within the confines of the city. This is a we had a very successful program uh, with the Sheboygan Area School District. Uh, I'm very optimistic that people are going to step forward. There's going to be plenty of opportunities, not only with existing facilities, but we've got a new police station going up. Uh, there's opportunities down along the lakefront for smaller donations. So I'm looking forward to a, another successful naming rights campaign. Wonderful. Thank you, Alderman Hannah. Any other questions? There are none. Please. Please call the roll. Hannah. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunis. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Susha. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. And Graf. <laughs> 14 ayes. Motion carries. Ordinances introduced 10 2054 by Alderman. Wait a minute. Yeah, by Alderman Graf amending a section of the municipal code so as to provide for a petty cash fund for the newly separated departments of engineering and public works. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll ask for suspension, please. Is there a second to that? Second. Is there any objection? There is none. Please continue. Then, Your Honor, I would move that the general ordinance uh, be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, I need to make an amendment. Under the first paragraph, uh, where it says an ordinance amending and so forth, where it says newly separated departments, I would move that that um, be changed to offices of engineering and public works rather than departments. I need a second. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> and then I have one question. Should um, under section 2873, number six and number seven, uh, should those be departments or should they be offices also? Okay, then also I would amend that item six and item seven rather than Department of Engineering, Department of Public Works would uh, read Office of Engineering and Office of Public Works. The, wait, wait a minute, is that acceptable under your second, yes. Alderman Retke? That'll cover it? Okay. They're all amend, uh, it's an amendment covering all the, okay. the language. <laughs> Any discussion on the amendment? There being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Now I need a motion to... Then, Your Honor, I would move that the general ordinance as amended be put upon its passage. Second. Motion uh, and second to approve as amended. Any discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunis. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Susha. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. And Hannah. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 2035 lies over. 2056 through 2060 to be referred. Matters laid over 11, 1926 
RO number 4240607 by the finance uh, director treasurer submitting a voucher paid during the months of November 2006. Alderman McGraw. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the RO be accepted and adopted. Motion and second. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 1928, <clears throat> General Ordinance Number 640607 by Alderman Berg amending the municipal code relating to wards and voting polls so as to change mm -hmm. the location of the 8th Ward voting poll to the St. Andrew Lutheran Church. President Berg. Ah, yes, thank you, Your Honor. I would ask that the ordinance be placed upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Under discussion. Uh, this is a change uh, of location, I believe, from Wesley to St. Andrews, and I believe the city clerk can give us uh, the reason why and perhaps some of the information about the change and how the residents will be notified. So I guess I'd ask the city clerk to elaborate upon. Thank you. Uh, city clerk? Uh, yes, thank you, Alderman Berg. Um, Obviously, we don't like changing polling places. It, it becomes challenging for the voters. However, in this case, we find that after years of being at Wesleyan, we're grateful for them to let us use their location. Um, it's challenging for voters to get downstairs in the basement. Um, it's sometimes cold down there. It's sometimes wet down there. And we felt that we needed to try and move it to a close proximity. And St. Andrew Lutheran Church was gracious enough to uh, agree to having the um, eighth ward polling place in their location, which we're very happy about. Um, what we'll be doing in the next probably week, we'll be sending out um, cards, notices to all of the registered voters in Ward 8, so they will be notified. We will have signs on Wesley Church, at least for the next two elections, to say if they do happen to go there, they know where they're going to be going. And we'll be putting it in the published paper that comes out the day before the election that the county puts on. She will be putting a big splash in there. We will have it on our website. I will be talking about it on the radios. It will be in the paper. So we will do everything we can to get all of these registered voters aware that this is going to be changed. Any questions for Sue? Alderman oh, Meyer? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just have one. This, this question has been brought up a few times. Why are we using churches for voting polls versus where we used to use schools? And a few people have asked me this over the years, and I don't have any answers. And I was just wondering why we went from public schools to churches. And probably long before I was here, they started using. Um, I know that in years past, they had used a lot of schools. But we find that the schools are very challenging to use because of the classes going on, activities throughout the day in the gym. We usually use the gymnasium for the voting poll, especially for the larger wards. And the schools were just saying, this is not working for us. So then we were down to, where do we put 16 voting polls? And it turned out that the churches ended up being the place where there's very little activity on a Tuesday. So that's really why. It's really the location. We don't have 16 places to go in within the city of Sheboygan. So that's I think that's where it came from. Thank you. Sure. Thank you very much. Okay, please call the roll. Clay Unis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Susha? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law 2061 will be referred to public protection and safety. 2062 will be referred to public protection and safety. 2063 will be referred to city plan commission. 2064 will be will lie over. 2065 a resolution by Alderman Hanna amending the rules of order and procedure for addresses to the, for addresses to the common council and its committees via the public forum. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mayor. I would uh, like to make a motion to file the document. Second. And a motion and a second to file 2065. Thank you. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Susha. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Kittleson Aye. and Clayunas. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 2066, an RC by salary and grievances <coughs> recommending filing various documents. Alderman Susha. 
Um, thank you. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second to accept and adopt 2066 under discussion. There being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 2067 will be referred to City Plan Commission. Other matters, Attorney McLean. 2068 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2007 and June 30, 2008. That will be referred to Law and Licensing Committee. 2069 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Sergeant Tushinsky forwarding a request from the Sheboygan North High School staff to add and or change parking restrictions on School Avenue due to the new field house area at North 12th Street. That will be referred to Public Protection and Safety Committee. 2070 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Charter Communications stating that they have been contacted by Deutsche Welle, the German programming provided on their expanded basic channel 78, informing Charter that they will be unable to renew their agreement for continued carriage. And that will be referred to finance. Okay. Motion second to adjourn. Any discussion? Anybody want to stay here longer? All those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Stand adjourned.